look, you know, it's kind of said before, like evolution of ideas in every in every sphere of our games is is ongoing and constant and goes right up to the end. So if those changes are you know design changes or tech changes or rendering changes or art cha art style changes, there you know there are things we take. They're, they're blows we take as we, yeah. as, as we go, basically, and no, I, I don't feel particularly fixed. One, you know, games have multiple levels, so there's, you know, the, the look is going gonna, is gonna to vary from a level to level anyway, um, but frankly, I'm really excited about what we put out in the demo, and actually, the three years that you're talking about was, was getting to that point. Yeah. It, it's a really hard style to hit, and I think that... We're confident that we hit it, and we're really glad to put that out there. Well, you're on to something with the, you know, you're, you're saying, like, are we worried that we're going to change the image? Like, part of the reason that the image is out there and available to the public now is because we finally got to that point where we were comfortable with it, and we are proud of it. And it, it was a long road to get to that point where we saw that, like Ken said, it was the key image of her reaching up to him. And, and For us, it was seeing that gazebo in the sunlight. Yeah, you know, you lock it in this one thing, and usually, sometimes it's just a handful of assets that you didn't think were that important, like the hydrangea blossoms and you know the American flag. And this is all coming together. It's the narrative is coming together, and I think you, you know, when something's actually working, when the entire team has this sort of eureka moment, you're like, oh, this is it, and you go confidently, confidently forward from there because you realize you've hit it, and you, and and in some ways, the rest of the game sort of just plays out in front of your. You had, and this is after. This can be after months and months of being sort of gridlocked on ideas. Well, you know that one thing happens. Well, one of the values of like the commercial world in coming into the art world is that you know we have this cover to do with you guys, right? So that sort of says to us, okay, here's a date where you have to some, make some decisions <laughs> by, and because as a team we're very comfortable like throwing work out, so we'll. I mean, we just throw out stuff all the time. We just constantly throw stuff out, and that's some. You know, I think that's. That there's a certain kind of personality that has to that to work here to be able to understand that you'll probably throw out a game's worth of stuff or two games worth of stuff while you're working on, on a game. Um, you know, even at this point, and you know, we've been working for several years already on this project. But we sort of said, you know, we choose a date which is about the right time for us. We know it's going to be the ballpark. We do it about eight months ahead of time. Like, okay, this is when we're going to go out there. And um, so, like, even like you know, working on this cover, the you know, the image of him evolves on that cover image, you know, and he evolved a lot based upon the cover image we were doing for you guys, and we finalized his look, sort of centered around that because he kept, and we showed you some of it, the evolution of him, he kept evolving, and we didn't have him, um, the look of him, you know. For quite a while, he's he's fairly recent, but he's also it's not like he's recent. Like, oh yeah, we should design him. It's like we work on him, and we work on him, and we work on him, and we throw stuff out. We even modeled several versions of him before we just threw out, mm -hmm. and he was cool. Like the guy we modeled was awesome. It just wasn't him. It wasn't this yeah. character. Yeah. He wasn't this um, you know representing what we wanted him to represent. But so so when you guys come, you know you're the first one really to see it it sort of sets a date for us, and I think yeah. that's a valuable commercial push on the artistic process. Yeah, you're yeah. like our sixth grade teacher telling us we have to finish our book report. Pencils down. <laughs> so pencils down. So the ads are, and it's a similar process to Bioshock 1, it's, we generally like to look at um, period uh, images, and um, and I think I think all the ads are, are based on, on period Art images, design. which we then sort of then say, okay, well, what if this image, what if this artist was working in Colombia? Yeah, and sort of appropriate. Um, and, yeah. and we appropriate and change. Um, and um, that's and that, and that's really exciting for me because there, there's just kind of a style, a kind of illustration that just doesn't exist anymore. And kind of right. thinking about the graphic design. graphic design is really fun. If you look at it back then, it is text heavy, but it, there's still this kind of whimsy of the designers still trying to figure out what they're doing and how to design a page and kind of has that weird innocence to it, even if it's like an alcohol or cocaine drops or things like that, you know, <laughs> which they had. Yeah, I mean, I just because people don't even know about it. So it was great about a ton of the advertisements yeah. back then. A lot of the modern advertising came out of patent medicine adver advertisements, which were generally um, drops with either morphine or cocaine, cocaine in them. Like, you know, they have all these ads for, you know, the, you know if, you have a, if, you have a, if you have a demon baby or a crying baby, you give them these drops and 
they were full of cocaine. Uh, so yeah. There was no regulation, or they were full, or they were full, of, or they were full of morphine. Or you know, on the other hand, not just narcotics, but mercury, cadmium, <laughs> like all these radiation. other wonderful things. Radiation. Yeah, yeah, radiation. Like, like, like there was no regulation on this of, it, of any kind until you know, sort of like 1915. Just nice so. heavy, heavy metals, transitional metals. <laughs> yeah. It was all. Good. And just buy this over. Just buy this over the counter. That'll make your baby quiet. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 the images are are, are 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 striking, and we did a similar thing on Bioshock One. A lot of the ad, a lot of the ads on the wall are based on the source images came from fruit um, cartons of the period. Yeah. Um, we actually had a book of these great fruit cartons. It was, for some reason, there was the illustration work we done on fruit cartons yeah. in the '30s and '40s. Yeah. I also collect sure. those. I have a collection. Oh, do you? Isn't that sad? <laughs> <laughs> collect fruit labels, fruit cakes. What's the original well, fruit? Well, for some reason, the artists working in that space were extraordinary. <laughs> I don't know, I don't yeah. know why. Yeah, they, they were just were. amazing. And so we adapted a lot of those images, and we were looking at, you know, the one of the ads is from a bicycle manufacturer on the, on the back of the magazines. From mm-hmm. is it based on a bicycle manufacturer? Or the Skyline ad is based on a from a bicycle manufacturer. There's some, oh, obviously music, sheet music. Sheet music at the time was incredibly um, important because there wasn't a lot of people didn't have record, uh, didn't have photographs at that point. So the way you had entertainment in your house is you'd buy sheet music and you'd play it on your piano. Your, have your your musical friend play it. Have your friends <laughs> gather around the piano. So instead of having your you know your your your, your iPod, you'd have a, p- a piano and somebody would see, you know you'd buy the new sheet music and that was a huge deal. So yeah. It was a huge it's like industry. A record, yeah. 